to a City Planner Plays City Builders where we are building the city of Bluffside Crossing. And in the previous episode, we finished our commuter rail network uh, with the exception of a few stations that I said we might finish in a later episode. Um, I, I mentioned potentially building the subway line in this episode, but there's an opportunity that I just can't pass up. Um, Right now, we're looking at our elevated stop in Lower Hillcrest. And this is the perfect location for a transit-oriented development. So today, we are going to take on our most ambitious project as the planner of Bluffside Crossing and have a major land reclamation project. Um, we're gonna build a couple structured parking ramps and we're gonna collaborate with the Target Corporation to have them sell some of their land in an effort to increase the tax revenues in this particular area. So uh, before that, um, in the previous video, I mentioned that, the, the, that we're losing money rapidly and I wasn't sure why. And in the comments, I, I was joking around with someone that, you know, I was gonna mess something up. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to connections, and I did. <laughs> um, I disconnected all power to our factories, and that's why they're not working. So let's fix that. I also never connected water up to our uh, new cargo terminal. So, or I should say our relocated cargo terminal. So we're gonna do that and then we'll get over to our new development. And this should fix all of our money issues over time. Okay, so back to Lower Hillcrest. Um, so what I'm thinking that we're gonna do here, we're gonna eliminate this parking, eliminate this parking, eliminate this road, tie this road into this one, and have a road that sweeps back this way. Um, now, transit-oriented development is really exciting. What it is, is it's, it's creating a, a real compact, uh, livable, walkable place um, where you can live without a car if you so choose. Uh, so there's gonna be mixed-use mixed, uh, mixed use, uh, development in here centered around a high-quality uh, transit network. And this stop is about as high quality as you can get. You can get all the way to downtown Bluffside Crossing. You can get to the industrial district um, in, in just you know a matter of minutes. Uh, not only that, you can get to this uh, cable car stop and get all the way up to the university. So if there was a decent amount of density in this area, you could imagine it would be a pretty good place to live. We also have our business park over here um, that has a number of jobs, many of which are unfilled at this point. Um, probably got a, a hundred or so jobs over here that, that could be filled. We also have a high quality bike network. You can bike all the way up to the university. And I think we're going to extend this all the way around this shopping center. So I'm going to make a couple changes here and I'm going to do this a little bit quickly. So I'm gonna pause and make the changes now. Um, first, I'm gonna build the backbone roadway network for this area. Okay, so now I have kind of the backbone of the roadway network. Actually, let's extend this out just a little bit further. Um, the backbone of the roadway network that I want in this area. And 
uh, a couple things that I did that you, you know I didn't really fully explain that I want to now. Uh, I relocated the both the police department and the fire departments so that they're located on ro local roads. Um, and I changed what roads are zonable. Um, the primary reason for this is I, I just want to focus the development on the roads that make the most sense to have de uh, development on that'll increase density. Um, so like for instance, I don't want to zone the parking lot road, so I'll take zoning off there. Um, I'm gonna modify this road just a bit. I'm gonna add some pedestrian paths now. Um, like I mentioned, being walkable and pedestrian friendly is one of the most important things in this type of development. Okay. So that is precisely what I'm trying to do. Make sure that this is as walkable as possible. So I'm going to go through now and make a bunch of key pedestrian connections. I made one here already in between the parking ramps. I'm actually going to, I noticed I didn't dezone this road. Not interested in having zoning coming off this road. Okay. Uh, I think I'm getting that right. Okay. So back to our pedestrian paths. It's going to be very important that we have access to all of our uh, modes of transportation. And, you know, I'm looking at this. This is actually redundant and not necessary, so I'm going to get rid of this. Um, the reason for that is people could come down and walk here. I, there's not really a reason why they would have to use that ramp for any reason. It's just kind of a frivolous ramp. Um, okay, I mentioned Target is going to relinquish some of their parking. Um, one of the things to, to, to realize is businesses such as Target are not just retailers. They're also real estate developers. Um, that, that's something that, you know, has been said about like Walmart, uh, McDonald's, for instance. McDonald's is a real estate uh, holder before it's anything else. Uh, so as a result, um, that's, you know, they are very interested in what's happening in real estate markets throughout the world. <laughs> so uh, Target would be too, and they would sense an opportunity here potentially, um, especially if the city encouraged them to, to explore it. Um, and there are multiple things that, you know, the city could do to make that attractive. Um, but I think the primary uh, driver in this instance would be Target acknowledging that there's some money to be made here. So, okay, let's get some zoning back here. And now we have a lot that we can work with here. There's a lot of land that's developable. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, I do want to make a couple changes. Um, right now, people can basically park anywhere on these collectors. Not really interested in that. So we are going to make this a bike network all the way around here. It'll kind of terminate here, but that's okay. I'm gonna also add a path behind target. And connect through, give people options. That is the name of the game here. Okay, four tiles. We want to make sure that we get maximum density. Yeah, let's go through right through that fence. <laughs> we don't need that. And we'll also make a connection back to this road. Encouraging people to walk if they can. So now that we have our pedestrian network well-defined, um, let's start to think about utilities. So let's get water everywhere. We will follow our little roads. Now, I don't know that I've explained why I used these little roads. Um, main reason is to discourage parking. I 
want to make sure that um, we're encouraging people to use alternative modes of transportation as much as possible. And our district policies are going to reinforce that. Uh, so this is no longer going to be part of the Lower Hillcrest Shopping Center. It's gonna be an entirely new district. And if you guys have any good ideas for names, please let me know down in the comments what, you, what, you, what you're thinking. Willow Heights is pretty boring. Okay, so I'm going to try to make sure this is well-defined and maybe a little bit attractive. <laughs> Not that it really matters, because uh, what really matters is the district policies. So let's define those now. So first of all, I want this to be a district that is really upscale, high quality. We're not going to have schools in this area. Um, so I guess we don't really need <laughs> education boost. Uh, free public transportation is something that's going to be important. I really want to reduce trash accumulation, mail accumulation. Um, so we're going to have uh, free Wi-Fi. Let's see. Let's give relief to high density to really encourage development in this area. So that's kind of the same concept as a TIF district. Give some sort of relief in exchange for the, the, the tax benefit that you would receive in this area. I'm going to have high tech housing and a high rise ban. Um, that's because I don't want this to be a downtown type area. I want it to have density, but I don't want it to be overwhelming. Um, I think it'll look out of place. I think this will really help. Um, let's say that if they live here with a car, they have to have an electric car. <laughs> That's pretty unreasonable, but I like it because I really want to discourage uh, people from using cars in this district. I'm going to also um, have big business benefactor and I think that those are the main policies we're gonna want in this district. Um, we're gonna treat this as an overlay district as well. Um, so I think some of the things that we might wanna look at policy-wise. So let's have self-sufficient buildings. And I think that's about all we want. Um, the organic and local produce lowers the uh, uh, but basically they're all lower buildings then, a uh, lower rise. We could do a smaller district in there if we wanted, but I don't really see it right now. Um, in fact, I think I am going to do a district of that in close proximity. Uh, some of my assets were lost when I went and I cleaned up my library. So I lost some here. So we're gonna have a little tiny district here, commercial with organic and local produce. And we'll name this the LHC Organic District. And we'll get that all zoned up. All right, so I like where we're at so far. Now we just need to get everything zoned. And the important thing here is going to be mixing uses. Now, this is a collector, so we can have housing on it, but we don't want to just concentrate housing in one location. So I am going to place some housing. I wanna kinda of keep it central and internal to this area. Everything here is gonna be zoned high density. I think we're gonna do offices on the outside. And we'll buffer the train station with some offices. We'll have some housing along the road, flanking the road. Some more commercial on the outside and near some of the more noxious um, things that are happening in the neighborhood. And then finish off with residential. Okay, I think we're in a good spot. Uh, in that area. Over here, I think I'm going to 100% uh, 
um, with the exception of maybe just a little, whoops, little area over here and near our main collector, Peter Street uh, Residential. So I think, I think we're zoned up. Things are looking good. So let me, one thing we don't have now that I'm thinking about it, whoops, is a small park. And I think that would be important here as well. So let's see. Put a basketball court. Give a small space to recreate. Uh, the other thing that we don't, that we haven't done is decorate uh, with any trees. Um, because this is pedestrian oriented, a really important thing in pedestrian oriented places is visual interest, uh, a feeling of safety, a feeling of calm, street walls. Um, so the, the buildings that we've zoned will create a street wall and uh, without foliage, it'll feel a little bit stark. So I think we're going to place some trees, but we might let the buildings build out first. So I think I might just time-lapse this for a second, let things build out. So. filling in I think there's a couple things that we probably should take a look at first of all I, I'm guessing our transportation networks are a total mess right now so let's make a couple modifications um, just to kind of smooth things over so we'll have some yield signs here whoops Actually, I need to put stop signs in. <laughs> it's it's the American thing to do. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. Um, I think here I could probably get away with yield. So interestingly, stop signs are warranted, uh, which means that you have to meet certain criteria to be able to, to actually install. A stop sign often politics gets in the way and you will see that uh, they're installed in places that don't necessarily meet warrants but we're going to I guess kind of assume that they would make warrants in, in all of these areas okay so I think we're in a better spot there let's continue to let this finish building out Let's take a quick look at what's happening on the ground. And you can see that the amount of pedestrian activity in this area is off the charts. And if we take a look at some of these buildings, I bet you they're going to tell a story. And that story is going to be that uh, these are very, I can't click on anything. I don't know why. Okay, um, so decent utilization out of our 
uh, station. Wow, our cable car use is through the roof. Both parking garages. Um, okay, the top is full. <laughs> that's that's pretty unreasonable. Most people would want to be inside, but whatever. Uh, it seems like Target's being used as a park and ride. I'm sure that they would be very unhappy about that. <laughs> Let's see our buses. They got some passengers on there. Um, so here's our organic produce area. That uh, looks looks good. Uh, I think I want to get some landscaping in here now. And the main reason for that is, like I mentioned, in an area that um, is supposed to be pedestrian scaled, you want to have ample landscaping. So let's do a little bit of landscaping and get that taken care of. So we're not completely zoned, but let's take a look at what our district looks like. So you might have noticed I, I dezoned this. I wanted to keep the target sign free of obstructions. I'm sure they would already be a little uncomfortable with how much is happening around there. So this is a very compact street and there will be a nice street wall once everything is developed here. What I mean by that is a row of buildings that kind of creates a, a defined space, a corridor. So that will be there. Lots of pedestrian options. So you might notice that there's not a lot of pedestrian activity on this particular street. I, I don't know about you, but I would prefer to be back here um, or inside of here. So my guess is that's where people are going. There are a few key connections that we could make. There's no way, real convenient way to get from back here to this bus stop. So why don't we just make that quick connection? Get through that fence. Not overly concerned about that fence anymore anyway. But cleaning up will be a trick. I'll take care of that later. Um, so kind of giving people options, people opportunities to, to find a unique route. You can see that people are taking advantage of these different paths, whether it's hopping on the bus, going to the train, which, whoa, look at that. We have really, utilization of the train has exploded. You can see that uh, we have some people here now. <laughs> They are waiting to go to downtown. And we've developed a pretty nice neighborhood, a place that I wouldn't mind living myself. Uh, good amounts of density, good views if you're over by the water. Let's see the tourism and IT cluster over there. And let's see how many people are, people are tra using the trails. They are, they're heading up the hill. Cable car stop still, so much activity. And our parking lot is filling up because people are coming here to get on the train. You can see all of that activity, all of these people funneling into this area. There's a lot going on. And that's because we have created a transit oriented development. It's a place that you could live in, work in, shop in, do everything you need to do, uh, including apparently get robbed if you're target. <laughs> um, but it's it, it, it generally a pleasant place to live. There's a lot happening. People are coming from this elevated train station going directly 
up to the cable car stop to go up to Hillcrest. Um, so let's take a look at one last thing. Interested in seeing the way the value is improved in this area. And you can see that this now is an incredibly valuable area. So even though we've made tax breaks uh, for the, the citizens in this area to spur development, even though we spent a whole bunch to grade this land, this is worth so much now. We have so many uh, you know, high quality buildings that are gonna level up and uh, you know, really do well. We do need to provide education, uh, healthcare, and a number of other amenities. Let me take care of just a couple of those right now. Let's see if there's any place we can sneak this in. Of course, we're gonna take out some of our best buildings. Bummer. Um, this is a high-end uh, school, so let's see. Let's get a community school in here. Hmm. And we may not have graded enough to make that a possibility. I hate to do this, but I think I'm going to. There we go. Everyone's happier. We needed a school. There are some sound issues, and the way to remedy that would be to change the zoning. <laughs> so that might have been a zoning issue. Um, I tried to buffer some of those noxious use uses. Apparently didn't go far enough. So hopefully that helps. So in general, I am uh, very pleased with how this turned out. There are a couple things we could improve like that, where the zoning was a little bit off. Uh, but for the most part, I think that this, this uh, district turned out really well. Um, let me know again if you have a name. Let me know what you think about this particular build. And, uh, well, another sick, sick citizen. I have a solution. I don't like the solution, but I'm going to have to do it. And that is eliminate the citizens in that area. Goodbye. Um, that would not normally happen. We would just, uh, uh, say the new land use for that building in the comprehensive plan is uh, office and hopefully it would turn over over time without demolishing the building because it was a nice building but it's a city skylines where you cannot reuse buildings uh, unfortunately um, so we are going to work with what we have so now we have a new building going in there uh, so I think we're in a good spot here thank you so much for watching if you like this video please hit the like button um, if you aren't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so and hit that notification bell if you want to know when I release new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.